This video looks at Ernest Rutherford's gold foil experiment. So around the early part of the 20th century, so around 1900-1910, Ernest Rutherford in Manchester in Great Britain was bombarding gold atoms, so he is a representative gold atom, with alpha particles. So the alpha particle was blasted and Rutherford was a student of Thompson. So Thompson had no, um, no idea what was inside the electron other than, uh, sorry, Thompson had no idea what was inside the atom other than electrons. So at the time, the plum pudding model was believed to be the model of the atom. So Thompson believed that the atom had this fuzzy positive charge with localized electrons in it. So Rutherford blasted atoms to try and study what this fuzzy positive charge was. He fully expected the alpha particle to either pass through or be unaffected by the presence of the gold atom. So it would take this dash trajectory with a momentum P. Or if anything, be deflected through a small angle with a momentum P prime. So he was expecting either an absolute P or a small range in P where P is momentum and the range would be delta P. If we look at this expectation, this triangle here, and we expand it, it's a right triangle. <clears throat> here the hypotenuse, the longest angle is P prime. The angle is theta, opposite the angle is delta P. So this is the opposite. And the other side is the adjacent. So this is uh, P. So we have the hypotenuse, the opposite, and the adjacent. We know from trigonometry um, that sine theta is the opposite over the hypotenuse. We know that sine theta is the opposite over the hypotenuse, which is delta P uh, over P prime. Okay. <clears throat> We're also going to use the fact that delta P, or the change in momentum, is force by change in time. So change in momentum is forced by change in time, and we won't derive here, but we'll state that the force in question is Coulomb's force, and Coulomb's force we're going to write as 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 q squared over r squared, where 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 is just a constant. Q squared here, the, in previous videos we've written the charge as E. In general the charge is written as Q. So Q squared is charge squared. R squared is the separation between two, between two objects that have a charge. So for example, if you had a, two objects separated by R, and this had a charge and this had a charge, then here you'd have two charges, Q and Q. So Q squared separated by the reciprocal uh, squared separation R. So we can rewrite this as delta P is 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 Q squared over R squared delta T. We also want to, so we're listing some equations now. We also want to say that the alpha particle, as it crosses the length of the atom, it's going to cross a distance of 2r. So we know that length, which in this case is the diameter of the atom, is 2r. And that's the velocity of travel, v, 
and the time of travel, delta t. So 2r is v delta t. So we know that delta t is 2r over v. We're now going to insert delta t, which is 2r over v, back into this equation over here. So we've got the change in momentum caused by a collision with the gold atom. Is this constant 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 times by the charge squared? One of the charges will be the electron, one of the charge or the nucleus, one of the charges will be the alpha particle over r squared. And delta t is 2r over v. So now we're going to plug some numbers in and we're going to try and calculate what this thing is. So I've rounded some of these numbers, but this is approximately equal to 1 by 10 to the negative 24 Newton seconds. So if you plug some reasonable numbers in, if you research what this constant is and then research reasonable values for Q and R squared, you get a value approximately 10 to the negative 24 newton seconds, which is a small number. <clears throat> By any stretch of the imagination, negative 24 is a small number. That would be 23 zeros before the first non-zero. So this is delta p. So delta p is very small. If delta p is very small, the angle theta must be very small. If delta p is very small, it implies that the angle theta is very small, as expected. So Tom, uh, Rutherford was not expecting any large deflection angles. <clears throat> Delta P over P prime is sine theta. So from this equation up here, our trigonometric equation, Delta P over P prime is sine theta. If we actually put some reasonable values in, this is approximately 1 by 10 to the negative 4, which implies that theta is inverse sine 1 by 10 to the negative 4, which is about 1 by 10 to the negative 3 degrees. So indeed, it's very small. It's approximately order of magnitude 10 to the negative 3 degrees. So a thousandth of a degree. That's almost unmeasurable. So if you read about Rutherford's Gold Foil experiment, this is, for the most part, this is what he observed, along with Geiger and Marston. They were the collaborators on the project. Imagine how surprised Rutherford was and his collaborators when very seldomly they saw a large angle. So imagine Rutherford's shock when theta greater than 90 degrees was occasionally observed. With the benefit of hindsight, we now know that what was happening is there was the evidence of a small, highly dense nucleus, which was very small, so it was easily missed, but very dense. So when you hit it, you deflected by a large angle. So this was, um, it took Rutherford about two years to explain these results. Um, but now we know that all that diffuse positive charge from Thompson's atom was condensed into a uh, point of locality that we now call the nucleus.